Today I just want to cover how to handle custom credentials, maybe something like API keys when using NA10. I want to cover this off because it drove me crazy trying to set this up. I have an API key and I didn't want it to show in the runtime or in the logs. I want it to be stored as encrypted and the documentation was so confusing. Let's just dive over and take a look at what I've got set up and how to get this working. So for this demo, I'm just going to use an Azure AD app registration. I use Azure a lot day to day, so this is a nice and easy way for me to demo. I'm in my demo tenant and I've pre-created an app registration here called NADN Custom Application Credentials. It's really got uh, no access to my tenant except for the default directory read I think it is or user.read. Yep, user.read and I've already granted it permission in the tenant so they were able to actually use it and I've given it a secret so that we can actually authenticate it against it and then once we're done with this demo I'll delete all this. Let's dive into NA10 and just have a look. I've pre-configured workflow so you didn't have to watch me faff about trying to get it working but if we jump over I'll show you what I set up which is essentially the wrong way or what we don't want to do. So looking at this workflow, yes, okay, it just runs on click here so we can show it testing. I've just hit add a new node, HTTP request, and I've renamed that node, but it's just basically that, and I've filled in the details. So let's delete that one and jump into the one that I've pre-filled in the details. And these details will obviously depend on what kind of application or API you're connecting to. But for our purposes, for enter ID app registration, it's a post request. The URL here is, is a standard OAuth URL for Microsoft with my tenant ID in it. And that brings me to the first point is this tenant ID, oftentimes I wanna pass that in as a dynamic value. So that will come from environment variables. And I'll have a look at how to do that first. But the second piece that I wanted to show you is really the authentication. And in this case, I've set the headers to pass in the content type of form URL encoded and that again this just for for intra prefer to your own applications documentation to get all these settings right and the authentication in this case is passed in the body and the body wants to see the client ID and the client secret and the scope and so forth so I've got all that set up and let's just test that and validate okay so we can get an authentication token now let's address the two issues so there's the authentication which is the big one and this a variable here if you will and let's do that first because in most of these low code automation tools you can just create variables and they have a little padlock and it's really intuitive like hey that information secret and you just hit the padlock and it stars it out and you can no longer see it and that's really not the case in N18 and that's what drove me mental so if I jump over to here to variables and I'll just leave all that leave without saving you can see I've already preset up this so if I just hit add new variable and the variable could be uh, anything really and some information then I can call that variable and I'm not going to save that one but I've previously saved this demo tenant ID here so this vars.demo tenant ID I can just copy that to my clipboard and what we'll do is we'll jump back to our workflow here personal and go to the token demo and if I dive into here and make sure this is set to an expression and let's get rid of the actual ID and we'll put in our double curly braces and call on that vars demo tenant ID and you can see in the result underneath that it's pulled that in and if I hit test it still gives me back an access token great okay but what was weird is that over in the variables is I had no padlock or no way to make that secure and I thought the documentation on this was really lacking there was information around enterprise plan and separate files and self-hosted and all sorts but not really a secure and flexible way on one of the other plans there is a way it's just badly documented the easiest thing to do here is instead of creating variables, which I was initially thinking that I'd have to do for each of these values, is I can just take the entire JSON object there. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go back to my projects folder. In this case, it's just personal. I'm gonna save that because I've updated my workflow. If I go back to here and go to credentials, you can see I've already created one here. And that is essentially just a paste of all of that information in there. And I've put it in an object, a nested object, if you will. The first key in that object is body. And that's just stating that if I use this custom authentication then it's going to be passed into the body if I wanted it to be passed into the header then that would be header and I'll show you on my notion page my notes that I took about that actually well in fact let's just jump over to my notion now and have a quick look so here's some examples here if I wanted to pass something into the header that JSON object would look like that so headers and then the key value pairs within headers for body it's basically this all the key value pairs and for query string then it's QS so let's jump back over to our workflow and I'll create a new credential okay and what I want to do is just so I can show you what's going on with this is I'll create a new credential and I'll call it demo bad. So from the drop down, I'm going to choose custom auth. I should have copied it from the previous credential. So let's just jump down here. We'll go body and quotation marks and make a colon there. And then I need to close that off and it's bothering me that that's not lined up properly. So I'll tab that across and I think that's correct. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the F on that one as well. So we know that that credential is wrong and that's going to give us an error if I use that. So let's save that and we'll jump back into the workflow. Now when you save something as a credential, it's encrypted in the database and it also doesn't show it in the logs of when you actually execute the workflow. So if I dive over into the workflow here 
and what I can do now is I can not send anything in the body there and the way I want to send the authentication in the body is to choose authentication and choose a generic credential type of type custom auth and then I'll get a drop down list for the ones that I've created so I want to create the obviously didn't rename that <laughs> demo bad did I uh, so let's let's use the good one first of all and validate that it works so great that one works and then the one that I created without the F in the key if I hit test step you'll see that it fails and if I extend that out what is nice to see is that in the request body the information there is getting hidden and that's just really what I wanted to show and that's that's what I wanted to see when I started to set that up so that's what I wanted to share hopefully that helps you be more flexible with your credentials and store them in a safe way until next time have a good one